first world order radio finally finally we are on the air no doubt all right all right there's always gonna be somebody in the building on first world order radio we get on into some of that order consciousness tonight First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Seen in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value with natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceed in others in time, order, importance. The most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence. An indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value with natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know our intention straight out. All right, so I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages for us to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories. Shit that works. Peace, peace. Back once again with First World Radio, your host, Brother Aleem Bay. And we have our co-host coming on, and that's Brother Fahim L. Are you here, brother? Hi, hey, watch it East. Brother Aline. How you doing, brother? How you doing today? Doing, doing very well. Doing very well, God. How you doing? All right. That's well. That's well. All right. Um, We're going to get to the show here. Um, We're going to have a very special guest. This is Brother Akbar Abdullah. Um, brother is a hip-hop activist as well as also a recording artist. And um, he's going to come on and shit some of his music with us. He's done... You know, basically done wrong with some of the greatest. You know, he rhymed with KRS One on still spitting. You know, and um, you know, we definitely want to get his um, you know, his point of view on the current state of hip hop and what's taking place right now. So we gonna bring brother Akbar on. Brother Akbar, you here? Peace. Peace, peace. brother. You hear me? Peace, peace. Loud and clear. Yes, we hear you. God. Word. Peace, peace. I'm good. I'm good. Right. Thanks for having me on the show. It's an honor and a privilege to be on the show. Definitely a oh, long-time follower you, of your work, brother. And peace to Brother Fahim. Yeah, peace to you, my, my brother. All right. All right. I, we, we see the current state of hip-hop, what's taking place right now. Um, you know, let's let's get into some of the history behind your um, MC and uh, what brought that about. Mm. Wow, that's, uh, that goes back to my childhood because... I started out really listening to my pops, who was a strong influence musically. He uh, he used to play the last poets, you know, at the crib when I was a shorty. I listened to that, and um, James Brown was always bumping at the crib, you know, which to me was like some of the original rap. Uh, and he used to do he used to do something that was called toasting, where he would just like say these long, elaborate kind of like poetry. You know, like strutting down 139, rocking the finest vines, cats with slick suits and alligator boots, mm. strolling through the park with stones that glowed in the dark. Like, it was like real colorful imagery, and um, I was kind of fascinated by by the the, the 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 words and how he put them together. So that was my really my first influence was pops, and the last poets had a strong influence. Growing up, 
I went back and researched it and, and found that it was really mind blowing what they was doing back in the you know the seventies. But um, fast forward until when I was probably maybe fourteen, living in the Bronx, um, which is where I was born. But I spent a lot of time in Chicago in my later years. But early on, I, I got influenced by the Cold Crush Brothers, Spoony G, Super Rhymes, Fantastic Five, Treacherous Three, you know, Furious Five. Um, the park jams that was really going on in New York at that time in the early 80s when hip-hop was really just a street thing. It was a subculture that was really really just an East Coast thing at that time. And it was uh, when uh, Rappers Delight came out that I really realized the influence that it had, and, and I decided to MC. Um, and, and being my younger, I'm, I'm the younger of my brothers is, is a year older than me, so, like, I looked up to my big brother also who was doing a lot of the, he was b-boying and he was down with Zulu, so I kind of wanted to be like my big brother. You know, he was tagging, and back then you kind of did everything. You, you know, you was a graffiti artist, you was break dancing, you was doing electric boogie. You was, you know, you might have been an MC, you might have been a DJ, you might have, you know. So I, I wanted to get into the elements of hip hop. So following my big brother, I started writing first, started tagging, and I started writing rhymes. You know, my first, my first. Name I think I gave myself was Amazing A. And, you know, this was back in the days when you used to, you know, lime to a lemon, limit to a lime, come to the party, you know, I got the freshest rhymes, and lime, you know, limit to a lime, lime to a lemon, I leave with the party and take all the women, you know, like, it was like the old school, you know, considered old school rap, but that was my first influence was, was just the old, the, 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 the foundation, you know what I mean? Like, that's where I come from. So I still carry that essence. Yeah, right, right. Mm. No doubt that you can definitely feel that. And um, I know that on recently you've been doing. I know you got something out right now. You um uh, Facebooked it to me, in which that um there's a couple of joints, um but the one right now is um is built on that keyword freedom. You know what was the inspiration for that? Wow, well, yeah, that that uh the song, the price of freedom. It's on my it's on my my most recent album which I put out in 2012 called Planet X. The name of the album is Planet X, and that song on the album is Price of Freedom. And this is dealing with our history, or at least some of our history, um, post slavery. You know, because our history, you know, we don't we don't have a history. You know, you, you can't you can't trace our history. We we go back to the beginning. You know, and there is no beginning. So, but I wanted to kind of give a historical look on just where where we where we come from. And all, all the things that we that we've been through, being coming out of slavery and, and the effect that it's had on us mentally and psychologically and emotionally, and you know, I just was dealing with that. And what happened was I put the album out in 2012, 12, 12, 12 was the release date. And I, you know, I shot a few videos. I shot Good Food. I shot Teacher Will Appear, which are two songs off the album. But what happened was like around February, another artist. She uh, decided to put the image of Malcolm X on her, I guess it was her single. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and I wasn't really appreciating the way she used the brother's image to Brother Malik, you know, El Haj Malik Shabazz. Like, I really felt, it was like a personal thing with me. Like, I, I just felt like for me to just sit back and watch that, you know, a lot of people was talking about it on Facebook. You see a lot of stuff on Facebook now. And, um, I, you know, I don't pay attention to a lot of it, but, but I like to look and see what's going on. And then when I saw that, it kind of touched me like, yo, I, I can't just sit back and watch this. So my reaction was not to attack another sister, but really just to do something positive with the images right. of, of our people who, who, you know, who sacrificed and led the way for freedom and justice. So I just decided to do that song, which was appropriate for, the, for what I wanted to do visually. So we went out and we shot in Harlem. One day it was just like snow blizzard. I was like, perfect, let's go out and do it. So we just went out on 25th, went by the old Autobahn on 165th of Broadway, where the brother was fascinated. And we just, we just shot different scenes, and then I pulled a lot of imagery of different leaders and different, you know, different revolutionary brothers and sisters who fought in the struggle. Rosa Parks, Mumia Abu, Sada Shakur, so on and so on. Like, and so I, we put it together, and I'm happy with it. Like, I'm very proud of the, of the end result. We, we, me and my camp. Over here in the Bronx, TME Studios, which is where I work out of, we uh we just we shot it, we put it together, we edited it, and I and I put it out, um, the last day of February, 
And I looked at February like, yo, February is an ill month for us because I always thought, you know, they took February and gave us that as Black History Month because that's the shortest month of the year. Right. And I always thought, well, you know, that's how they play us, which they do play us. But when I looked at all the the, the, the important leaders that were born and died in that year, I was like, wow, this is really a powerful year. I mean, I'm sorry, a powerful month. February is a powerful month for us. So I wanted to put it out in that within that month, within that time frame. So we we chopped it up and put it together, and I released it on the last day of February. And um, it's been doing pretty good. Like, I've been getting a lot of good, you know, good feedback. So that was really what, what, what sparked me to 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 – to put the video. The song was already something I did and I wrote because my man Parker, like, he blessed me with the track. And sometimes when I get the right beat, it just comes to me, like, the ideas just start to flow. And um, and I always wanted to do something, you know, about our history here in, this, in, in, in these, you know, the wilderness of North America. Like, I wanted to do something dealing with that. So those lyrics fit the beat so perfectly. And then when we, when we put the imagery together, this all came together. And it's an ill video. If you check it out, it's Akbar. Price of Freedom, and it's it's on YouTube, and um yeah, it's been getting some love, man. No doubt, no doubt. So we're getting ready to listen to it right quick. Right. You know what's some of the um things in which that they said to you in order to you know um, keep you striving, and all the time you know putting out good music and you know up with the forty minutes. Hmm. Oh wow! I think one of the one of the most Influential songs for me, like as just as a shorty, was was Super Rhymes. That song was crazy to me when I was when I was like probably like fourteen, thirteen when I heard that joint. Um, Booney G was one of my favorite casts. Like this is, you know, we going back to the like this is the golden era for me. Like they, those cats really made a lasting impression. Of course, the Cold Crush, you know, man, Grandmaster Kaz. Um, you know, I really loved those brothers, man. They really laid the foundation. Um, and then, from like moving forward into like the late '80s, the early '90s, I don't know. There's so many different artists that 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 I resonated with. Um, KRS One was definitely one. Um, Chuck D from Public Enemy. Um, wow, there's a lot of brothers that are, and sisters that I I probably won't mention right now, but that's just because it's too many to really to really you know go down the list. Um, I like, I mean, I, I like so many different artists, man. Like, right now I can't say that because the radio has really just taken over and, 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 and they're force-feeding us garbage right now, which I don't really even really tune in too often. Um, right. But I love I love brothers like Nas, of course. The Wu-Tang, they, I think they really rejuvenated the whole industry um, when they came on the scene. Like, I resonate with those cats because they was just like a reflection of self. When I, when I heard certain cats, when I hear... It's like I'm listening to me. It's like I'm I'm hearing myself, I'm seeing myself. So like those are the cats that I really fuck with. Um, but yeah, the Wu definitely like they put it down when they came out. Um, and then there's just certain teachers, um, you know that that, and, and you know you were saying like people who encouraged me along the way. I didn't really get a lot of encouragement. I think my mom's encouraged me. Surprisingly, she was encouraging. Like she, she supported everything I did. Whether it was even even graffiti, she supported what I did because she knew that there wasn't a lot of outlets for youth out here. Like you, if you wasn't gang banging, you wasn't selling drugs. Um, you know, there wasn't really a lot of options for you. Like I, I, I grew up in Chicago too. Like when I went to Chicago, I was probably 14. I went to high school in Chicago, and Chicago was crazy. Like it still is. They call it Chirac right now because it's like so many bodies getting caught out there. Um, it wasn't really a lot of options for Shorty. So hip hop really saved a lot of lives. And um it wasn't a, it wasn't popular. Like MCing wasn't wasn't always as popular. Everybody wants that everybody thinks they could rap now. You know what I mean? Like I don't even tell cats I spit because everybody thinks they could rap and do this because it's 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 become such a, a it's like it's just so so common now that everybody thinks they could do it because the the, the stuff you're hearing is so so dumbed down that everybody can do that because that's not really art. So back when I was doing it, it wasn't really a popular thing to do. It was certain cats who did it, you know, MCing was an art. And you couldn't just run up and grab the mic unless you, you, you know, you had, to, you had to build that street credibility before you even stepped on, onto the stage or, or stepped into the circle. 
to the cipher. Like you couldn't just run up on the mic. Cats had to know you had to you had to earn your stripes back then. So I came from that era, like where I was just battling cats. And um, I didn't get a lot of encouragement, but like even the haters were fuel for the fire for me. Like when cats tell me you when when somebody tells me I can do something, I just get more. I I just turn that. I, I recycle that energy and I turn it right. into, into you know into like that's my fuel. So, right. um, you know, I was in relationships where I didn't get the support, you know, um, and, 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 you know, some of my friends really probably didn't see my vision, but my man Teeley, like my DJ back then, still my DJ still holds me down with the beats. Parker Lee, he, um, he definitely was like a big support. But like, that was like my brother, still my brother. You know, we, we, we did a lot of things together, and we came up just from, like, building our names on a street level. So, like... I, I think self determination is was really the main driving factor for me. Like I, I didn't rely on other people to to big me up or, or, or you know, encourage me or make me feel like I was good enough because at the end of the day they say you're never as good as as as, you, as people say you are. And, you know, I always just I'm my worst critic, so like I just I just I just built that self determination. And I think I think my foundation definitely lended to that because I was I was in the lessons when I was a, when I was a kid, when I was a baby. From a baby, I was learning my 120, and, and, and that foundation, I think, really was 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 what made me strong enough to to endure the industry because the industry is it's it's cutthroat. You know, mm. I got jerked a few times. I learned the hard way about publishing and, and royalties and how all that works. Like I trusted people in the beginning because I was I was still young and all I wanted to do was rap. Like back in right. back in ninety mm. back in ninety four. I got down with my man Jamalski, who was down with BDP at one point. He was running with Chris when they was doing the Black Jesus thing and all that entertainment, you know what I'm saying, before Chris really broke off and went solo again. We had Miss Melody, and it was like, you know, everybody was, it was, it was like a crew. And Jamalski was down with that. He was doing the raggate chatting. And um, I met him through my man Peely, because they grew up in New York together. Peely's from the Lower East Side, Manhattan, but... I met him in Chicago, so me and Peely, we really clicked up and we became a crew called, we called Mental Giants. That's my crew, Mental Giants. But um, I met Jamalski through him. And when I met him, Jamalski kind of put me on to the industry because at that time in 94, he had to deal with Sony, Columbia Records. So I was at the Sony building in New York. I was probably maybe 20, 21, you know what I mean? And um, I was running around with A&R, Faith Newman, who who signed, like, the Fugees, and she signed Nas, she signed Curious George. Like, this was an era when Cass was trying to get deals. Cass was, like, trying to get signed, you know, to the label. Like, that was the whole thing back then was to get signed. And um, my man Jamalski had an album he was recording, so Peely brought me out there. I met Jamal, and I got on his album just spitting a, a crazy, like, 48-bar verse called Aquas Groove, and, and I ended up landing a song on his album. His album was called Roughneck Reality. And I didn't know nothing about the industry. I didn't know how the publishing works and how the points get split and all that. I just wanted to rap. So I did that song, and it kind of got me a buzz, got my name in the industry for a little bit. And it kind of it kind of gave me it gave me the, the confidence to, to, to do the music on a, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a bigger scale where I was like, this could be a career. Because I saw Jamal getting, you know, he was shooting videos, he was flowing around. You know, he was doing mad, you know, he was doing mad shit as a, you know, as a kid. Like, I still was a kid. Like, mentally, I didn't really know a lot about the, about the music. So, I was learning and I was, like, kind of open to everything. You know, I was I was in the elevator going up and down, like, Unique Studios downtown. This is the same studio where, where Tupac got shot in the lobby. I was seeing Puffy on the elevator. And at that time, I didn't know who he was, but I felt his aura. Like, I knew who he was later. I remembered him, you know. Nas used to be in the building. And, like, I saw, you know, I, I was running into the Fugees, Lauren Hill. Like, I was kind of in the midst of a lot of different things. And um, if I took that energy back to Chicago with me and said, well, I got to learn this industry, I got to learn this business, I can't just expect to rap. I got to really learn the other side of it. So, you know, I kept emceeing and I just kind of learned that side of it. And um, later on in, in 01, 2001, I, I landed a record deal which allowed me to put out my first album, was called Big Bang Boogie. That was in 2001, which was the new millennium. So Big Bang Boogie came out. I put out like, I think it was 
16 joints on that album. And the album did okay. It did pretty good. People were still buying CDs back then. People don't really buy music no more like they used to. You know, it's a whole different landscape now. But at that time, I was doing a lot of shows. I got mad overseas love. Still get overseas love from all countries everywhere, all continents. Um, And that album allowed me to learn a little bit more. But at the same time, I was still trusting. I trusted my man to uh, take care of my publishing for me. At that time, I was Big Bang Boogie with my baby. That was my first album. I had a lot of songs that I wanted to put on the album just from all the years of emceeing and being an artist and putting songs together and learning how to structure my rhymes into songs because I was a battle cat back in the, in the early 90s and the 80s. I was just a battle cat. I would just step in the ciphers and the slay cats. Like, that's what I did. That was what I enjoyed, just getting on the mic, open mics, running around Chicago, doing all the open mics, you know what I'm saying, at double at um, I'm sorry, lower links and the spot, blue gargoyle steps, just on the streets. So coming from that era I had to learn to structure myself and make songs that people could follow, you know what I mean? So when I did the album I brought all the songs to the table. But I didn't still understand that you can't trust everybody. You can't trust nobody really. You gotta just trust self. So I, I you know, I was I guess I just I thought that these cats were going to do things on my behalf, and basically my publishing was taken from me. You know what I mean? Mm. I'm still I'm still really trying to get that all cleared up because you know I'm still fighting for that because at that time I, I was I was ignorant to that. But um, you know I, that's when I really knew that it's more to this than just them seeing. So you know I say that to everybody out there who thinks it's just about shooting videos and looking fly and, you know, and popping bottles and all that. That's not really what life is about, and that's really not what this industry is, is, is that, you know, they want you to do that so they can steal, your, steal all your wealth while you're running around trying to buy expensive mm. chains and cars. Wow. They, they, they the, you know, they're the ones who are really getting rich. So, you know, I learned all that, man. And now I just go for solo. Wait, wait, what, what's some of the... Um things that you would tell, you know, tell a, um, you know, an artist who's just coming into, um, you know, the field of hip hop, you know, you know, trying to become a rapper or whatever the case is, you know, and the difference between what we call shit hop and real hip hop, mm-hmm. you know, what, you know, what would you tell them? Uh, I just say rap about what you know, not about what you hear other people say or what you see or what you, you know, what you fantasize about. Like, rap about what you really know. And to me, that always that always translates and vibrates on a real level. Like, I resonate with real cats. I don't care what you're rapping about. Cause to me, positive and negative is just, it's relative. You know, it's, it's, it's like hot and cold. It's, it's just relative to where you're at on the scale. Like, I look at everything, and if it's real, I can, I can, I can you know, I, I could vibe with it, and I could, you know, I, I could rock with it. So I just try to talk about things that I know, and I try to aspire to just know more so I could increase my vocabulary, increase my mind, and share more thoughts and ideas. But these cats out here is just so dumbed down that it's just really not, it's not even yeah. a formula to, to be creative. It's just everybody's carbon copies of the next person. Hmm. And it's just, it's, I don't know, man. I don't, I, don't, I don't find it entertaining. I really don't like a lot of stuff right now. Like, I can't fuck with these cats. I don't even, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, man. But... I know that I have a, a responsibility to, to to continue the art form and to elevate and just keep evolving with it. So that's why I really do what I do. Cause I, you know, first of all, I enjoy it, and I feel like it's also a responsibility that I took on when I chose to really be an MC, which is a master of ceremony, and that, that, that's that's the title that I that I, you know that I, I I I don't play with, you know. So, yeah. yeah. So they really dumb right, down so, nowadays, yeah. Right, yeah, right, right. Now, now, much, now, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Now, now, talking about coming down, you know, of hip hop. Um, obviously, we come from an era in which that, you know, um, you know, the bar for originality, the bar for creativity, you know, um, was pretty high. You know, I mean, yeah. you have real lyrical skills. You know, you can't um, do as, um, you know, as these mother goose ones. You know, type of guys that are out right now, and there's no disrespect, but you know, um, 
you know, it's time to stop putting something in, you know, into the people's heads other than just twerking and, and uh, you know, the same thing in which that is um, been going on, you know, in the industry. Um, like, for example, what you think, you know, is the difference between the era of hip-hop that you came in at and those in which that you admire as compared to what's going on right now? Um, there's no respect. At, at the, there's no respect for the for the art form. I think when I came in, when I came into the picture, when I when I really like was coming of age and and and, and the music and everything and just the whole culture of hip hop, there was such there was such a respect for it. Like you you couldn't like you just couldn't perpetrate a fraud back then. Like because cats would see right through you. So you 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 just really had to you had to keep it funky. Like or you you was a toy. You know you was a herb. So it's not like that, right? Right now, these cats, these cats look like girls. Like you don't know what's what. Like it's, it's not, wow. it's not, it's not the same. It's not the same. Uh, the, the criteria is different now. But back then, like you really just had to come. Like but first of all, the first, the first rule of MCing was not to bite, and you can't run your rhymes. And that, that, that seems not to, to that. That's going out the window with these cats. Like everybody's biting. Everybody's, everybody sounds like Drake or sounds like. Whoever they sound like, you know, they they all sound the same. They all got the same squeaky voices. You know, back then cats sound like men. Like you had a voice, mm-hmm. and your voice was mm-hmm. unique, and you had to set, you had to set yourself apart to get noticed. Like, you know, you had to really have a voice back then. Like that was your instrument, right. and then what you said and your style was what was what cats really, you know, that's what they rock with. Like that made you a dope MC. But now everybody kind of sounds the same. They're whining. They're not really talking about anything positive or constructive, so it's just a lot of it's just a lot of garbage. It's like fast food. It's like fast food, you know. It's like it, it might it might taste good when going down, but once it gets in your stomach, you get indigestion. You constipated. You know what I mean? You're not healthy. You don't really feel good. You're sluggish. You're tired. <laughs> so good hip hop, you might it might not taste good at first because you're used to so much garbage, but once you get used to the real. Then you can't go back to the garbage, and, and, and the real is gonna give you life, energy. It's gonna, it's gonna like, it's gonna give you, you know, energy and 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 and, and strength. <laughs> it's, it's it's a whole different thing you're dealing with. So like, good music is is gonna it's gonna it's gonna resonate with your whole, your physical, your mental, your spiritual. But the garbage is gonna is just gonna bring your vibrations down. And these cats is like definitely they 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 on a they on a third circuit they on they they dealing with the first three chakras like the whole society it's really a reflection of society so like where we are right now is a reflection of where society is, is has steered us and you know we don't deal with that you already know Dr. Eileen Bay you know what time it is we come with this real life energy like we 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 dealing with the three best per minute we we, we trying to get to that one breath like we not we not moving backwards with this so mm-hmm. I try to do that with the music. And with the proper breathing, with the proper nutrition, and, and all that, like it's all one thing. It's not. I don't, you know, compartmentalize my 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 life. Like I just, it's all one. You know, I'm trying to get sunshine in the day. I'm trying to I'm trying to bask in, in raw every day, and I'm trying to like, you know, what I mean, drink water and 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 do my calisthenics and and and, and you know and and let these ideas come from the universe and flow through me and like uh, right. just just create new new you know just new things. No doubt. Right, yeah. no doubt about it. And um so what we're gonna do right now is go to your phobia. You know, what was the um concept behind the um you know behind that song as far as phobia? Oh, phobia doors? That's a joint that that's a, that's a, that's a, that's, a, that's a, I like that joint. That joint is just uh it's like going back to the park jam. It's kinda of that era. It's got that feel, my man Fred, Fred once. Uh, one of my producers over here at TME Productions, TME Studios in the Bronx. This is my man. Like he, you know, my man. Held, he holds me down. Like musically, that's my brother. Spiritually, um, he's a Dominican cat. I met him in Chicago too. Like my story is kind of ill because being from New York, but I lived in Chicago from I say the mid '80s all the way through. You know, I would come back to New York and visit, but I was basically in Chicago. I was in Shot Town. I was one of the main cats. On the north side, like original cats to, to bring hip hop, tagging, you know, graffiti and emceeing and all that. Like cats know me. Those who know know they know my history. But I met Fred also in, in, in Chicago in the '90s. He was he was bombing. Like I saw his throw ups 
and I knew he was a New York cat. I met him eventually. He was he's also a DJ engineer. And um he came back to New York, got a studio in the Bronx, and his studio has kind of evolved and upgraded since back in I would say ninety eight when I he was on Grand Concourse. That's when I was when I was uh, recording Big Bang Boogie, my first album. I came back to New York. I recorded some songs with him. He mixed a lot of my albums for me. He's a dope engineer, dope DJ, produces his own music. Dope. He's like just dope on many levels. And um, he had a project called Phobia of Doors. Actually, the project is called Phobia of Doors, which was his, his EP, his album that he put out. I forgot when it was. Probably it was about maybe not, 2004, 2003, he put that album out. And um, he threw me a beat, and I just I jumped on it. And it's the intro to the album, and the song is really called is really called Genealogy. It's like that's the name of the song, but he on the album it appears as the intro, Phobia of Doors intro. But it's called Genealogy because it's really about me becoming coming an MC, and it's like some battle at the park. Yeah, that 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 that, that, that's like that park that's that park jam spirit. You feel that? You know what I mean? That's like that's like back at the like the block party, like when when they blocked the streets off and had to had to had the 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 equipment hooked up to the to the to the fucking telephone, the street lights and shit. You know, like the street pole. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that 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 beat is crazy. That's my man Fred. Once I'm trying to I'm trying to see if you if he thank you bro thank you girl. I'm trying to see if he sent you. The price of freedom, and because uh, I got you, I just got you, I just got you uh, the other, the other Addy that you sent me. But he sent it to the original, right. your original uh, address. Right. Got, I don't know. Right. I don't know like if you can access more. it. I'm going to try What's to ask, uh, um, but um, I definitely want to get to you and that KRS One joint is still spinning. Okay. Know? Um, you no, know, um, you no, know, what, you know, you know, you told us how you met, you know, um, um. You know, Chris? to get down production. You know, but um, you know, um, how how you got with Chris and um, and how you got on that um, still spitting. Okay, uh, what happened was, I was I was doing shows in Boston, at the Middle East. Like this was maybe 2001, 2002. Like right after my first album had come out, and I was still touring and doing shows around just different cities. And I was in Boston at the time, and I met Mr. Liff, Acrobatic. Uh, the creators, like all these cats from Boston, Insight, different cats. And um, one of the promoters, his brother named Marlo, he was telling me, he was a big fan of the music, and so me and him, we like we linked up, and I kept in touch with him. But he was telling me that he was in the process of putting out KRS-One's next album, which at that time, it was around, now this, I met him in like 2001, but like he told me like, yo, I want you on this album, I'm going to do an album with Chris. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, yeah, okay, you know, like, I, I hear you, but, like, I want to I wanna really see it happen. And a few years later, he was like, yo, I'm making an album. I'm going to send you this track. Chris is on the track. I want you to come right after him. So I'm like, what? Like, let's do this. Like, where's the tracks? He sent it to me. I was in Chicago at the time. So, like, it was real. Like, when, when I got that call and when he told me he sent me the track, it was like, yo, I got to come I got to just come with the heat. Like, I can't play around right now. This is Chris. So um, I did my 16, and it ended up on the album. So I, me and Chris have never really face-to-face met, but my DJ Peely actually knows KRS-One. Um, KRS-One has come through the studio over here at TME a few times because he knows Just Ice. Just, you know, Just Ice comes through a lot. He's in the Bronx. He comes through, and he's done music here. Through the label that we got, Peasant Podium is our label. That's where we put our music out through. Um, so they've he's come through. He's had a, he's done a few songs here, and but I've never actually met him. No, I'm sorry, I take that back. Wow, I did meet Chris, but I met him at a show. And the reason why it doesn't it doesn't really register that I met him because we was performing, so I never really got to build with him and really just speak, you know, on a one to one basis, like you know, chop it up and and really just talk to him, whatever. But we was at a show together. He came to he came to Chicago. Um, this was after I let me see. Was this after? This was I think after I did the song. On the no 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 maybe this was before yo. This might have been beforehand. I met him at a show in Chicago, and 
he let me get up on stage and rock. And no, yeah, this was after I did the song. This was after I did the song. But I did the song. I sent I sent my verse in, and what happened was he had a lot of other MCs. Uh, this cat Marlo from Boston. He had a lot of MCs come on the song after me. Uh, Elder Head Toucher was one of the cats who came after me. I think Superstition is on the song. It's like four or five other MCs on the track. It's like a posse track. But Chris came in first, killed it. I come in, so it's like a posse track, and everybody else comes in. And I, I, I remember the feedback from Marlo was like, yo, he was like telling me, like, yo, who was that cat that came on after me? Like, like that cat, you know, he, he came with it. Like, and that, that, that was like, that was like the biggest honor to hear that from, you know, bigging me up like that. So uh, that's how I got on the song. It's called Still Spitting. It was on his Keep Right album, which um, I think like one of the hot songs off that album was My Mind Is Racing. Vroom, vroom, vroom. My Mind Is Racing. Like that was that was one of my joints off there. He got like a lot of joints, but Chris is crazy. Like Chris, he's an ill cat. He he got so many albums out there. You have to really research and and keep up with him because he's always doing lectures and. You know he speaks at universities, and he's an ill brother. Like I would, I'm definitely. It's gonna, we're gonna meet. You know what I mean? It's gonna happen, and we'll probably do more music together, inshallah. But um, it was just beautiful just to have the opportunity to be on a track with him, and I, I felt like I did my thing. Um, yeah. So that's that's the story behind that. Yeah. Tell us on, you know, what's behind on what's if, brother Akbar. Uh, what if? Yeah. What if is uh wow, did that song a wow? Did that song in like oh five? Yeah, yeah. We right. we we can, we're gonna catch y'all up, people. We're gonna catch y'all up. That's that's oh five right there. That's that's just dealing with the the the, the Willie Lynch syndrome that we still we still dealing with to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, and within the within the rap industry, how we pitted against each other, and that's like I said earlier. That's why I chose not to attack, but to just respond through my own movements, like. I don't never attack another brother or sister, and when you they say when you point one finger, you got you know you got three pointing back at you. So like I, I just wanted to like speak about how we are not unified and how you know you got rap beef that turns into you know cats getting murdered and and nobody knows who did it. You know what I mean? So it's like it's just, it's crazy. But um, the the song was about what if what if we could all get along? You know what if you know, like, you know, we just was, you know, more unified and strong, you know. It's like this is lyrically about how we need to how we need to get together and, and become one nation, you know, one people. And, um, yeah, it's, it's a dope song. I did it I did it behind the whole Nas, Jay-Z, Biggie, Tupac, all the different beef. But I was actually, I was loving that Nas, Jay-Z beef. I kind of wish they never really shook hands and all that because... I don't know. <laughs> I love I love when he came out with the ether. But you know, it didn't get to the level of I'm gonna kill you, I'm you know, I'm coming out with guns right. blazing like the whole Tupac Biggie beef was to me was crazy and it was really fueled and they they you know, they, they fanned the flames. The media did that to really yeah, did. Mm-hmm. escalate the beef and they love that. When when they see us fighting it's like they love that. So they just add fuel to the fire and instigate. But you know, but the whole but the so that was the song was dealing with that, dealing with that type of mentality. And um, it's, it's just it's a dope song. I did it back in '04. And um, me and my man Third Rail, DJ Third Rail in Chicago, big up Third Rail. We uh we put that joint out along with a few other joints. And um, yeah, that's what's up. But that ether though, right. that ether. <laughs> Forget about it, yo. He body bodied it. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I was loving that. Crazy. That's 10 yeah. years ago. That, that did, That's like, that's a whole decade. You know what I mean? Come on, man. Y'all need to stop playing with this music. Right. What if rappers had to take a pill that made them tell the truth every time they wrote a rhyme or ever spit in the booth? Mm. Man, come on. Yeah, man. Big ups to y'all, man, for for representing the real the realness. Like, y'all be bringing it, man. Y'all don't even know how... how, how I'm amped right now, V. Like I listen to y'all, man. I don't even. I don't, first of all, I don't even own a TV. I haven't owned a TV since 2010. I don't plan on owning a TV. <laughs> I don't need the TV. You know what I mean? Like I don't. I don't watch TV. I be online. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm online. Like you know what I mean? <laughs> what? Anyway, yo, man. Much love to y'all, brothers, man. Like for mm-hmm. real. 
Much love, love to you, God. Right Word. No doubt. Appreciate yeah, man. You, we in the building, yo. No doubt, no doubt. You gonna go to the next joint called Antidote. You know what was the concept behind that, brother? Watch. This is just lyrics right here. This is just the antidote against the whackness. This is like this is my this is my this is my my truth serum. I'm I'm, in, I'm I'm shooting I'm shooting the truth serum. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this is just the antidote to the whack, watered down, commercialized hip hop. Like, this is the antidote. Um, let's. I guess I guess we're gonna. Um... I'm loving the, I'm loving the way this show is flowing right now, God. Like, it's right. crazy. Yeah. Right. How you feeling, Fahim? Uh, uh, Fahim, how you? I'm good, brother. Word, word. 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 And you said that came from your inspiration just based on, you know, your diet from the age of 17, you know, huh. you know, just, just learning the science of, you know, of eating and of health itself. No doubt. No doubt. Yes, sir. Right, right. That's like good food. Everything you put in your body is food, you know, information, music, you know, actual food, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah, but that that that's that's that joint right there, man. That's that joint right there. That's like you wake up to that. Like that's that. You put that on in the morning. You know what I mean? Just like drink your water. You squeeze off some lemon, some herb tea, whatever you're doing. Get some sun coming in. Gotta have that sun, man. Gotta have that that that, that raw. Like you gotta have that every day. I don't care where you live. Just get that sun on you. No. No yeah. Doubt. Yeah. But yeah, the good food, man. You gotta put the right food in your body. You know, it's like like I think uh, Layla Africa said, your fork could be a shovel to dig your own grave. So you want to be careful what Ooh. you put on your fork. You know, so I, no. I, 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 you know, I follow I follow the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. You know, I I I, I listen to Doctor Savi on the alkaline electric foods and all that. Like that's what I'm working with. I'm working with that. You know, what I mean, big okay. up to my son Tariq, my son out in, out in uh, Chicago for for becoming a vegan. He he go hard with it. He makes his own almond milk. He he eats like like teff, which is like a, a Ethiopian grain. He's messing with nothing right. but like quinoa, amaranth, and yeah, his baby is his his, his seeds are gonna be so advanced, man. Like they getting they getting the breast milk and they are going straight to the organics. Like my son Tariq, much love to you and much love to all my seeds, Hannah, and and my and my my youngest daughter Layla. Love y'all, man. This is this is like this is what it's about. <laughs> about them because, because that's the price of freedom right <laughs> that's what word up <laughs> word up no price doubt of freedom is, no doubt. is freedom, you know so <laughs> word word i right, ready to go to the line we got um an international call coming in from area code 111 you're on the line peace International call, you on the line. All right. Um I guess they'll come on whenever they um uh need to. But um brother Fahim, you got any questions for the brother? Oh yeah, brother, uh, you said earlier about how much they had dumbed down a lot of the uh rappers, you know, through the years. And not what nowhere near like it used to be, you know, where uh, brothers talking conscious, a lot of consciousness, yeah. mm-hmm. and uh, that's one of the reasons I believe. Another of the reason why I believe why Tupac it was uh, killed. One of the reasons, you know, mm-hmm. uh, other reasons like, like you said earlier also that uh, they was uh, feeding fire to the fuel, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, two brothers arguing and fighting against each other, him and uh, Biggie Smalls, you know. Right. So yeah, I had I had uh did a little little research on that and uh found out some things that uh a lot of, well, some rumors about people behind that, you know. Mhm. Behind the record industry because they wouldn't do what the record industry wanted them to do. We know who controls and runs the uh recording industry and all that. Mhm. Yeah, uh, they were making money off a lot of these rappers. You know, the rappers were making near as what they should have been making and profiting off of for their own work and labor. Yeah. Wow. You know. Mm. Yeah. 
there's, there's definitely more to it than, than than what they than what they what they present in the media. You know, right. they always right. trying to kill the black right. society. You know, they that's what right. they've been doing. Yeah, no doubt. And also, so what what is your take on um, you know, the so-called Illuminati or whatever? You know, um, in the entertainment, you know, showbiz slash you know hip hop, you know, feel. You know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, I know it's very real, and I know when you get to a certain level of success, quote unquote success, you, you there's a door you that you that's that's presented, you know, you got to either walk through it to get to that next level of, 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 you know, celebrity, or you pretty much get written off and your success plummets, and you don't have the the machine behind you. That machine is really that's what the Illuminati is, and you know. I don't really get off too much into it because there's it's so much fear factor tied into that. And I don't, you know, mm-hmm. I'm fearless. You know, I, 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 I don't even operate with fear. Like, there's a lot of things I did within internally to make me who I am. Like, and fear was something that I dealt with a long time, and I, I didn't realize how important it was to shed the fear. Like, I kind of, I kind of like, I, I, you know, I, I went through like a, a rebirth um, in 2009 and 2010, like around that time, before I, I gave birth to my second album, like I really had to go, I had to start from zero. Um, like I came out of divorce and everything and lost everything. Mm. Lost my job, lost my crib, lost my car. Wow. Lost all the things that my world consisted of, but never really lost faith. And, and, and I, 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 you know, it, it, it forced me to really rebuild myself. And when I did that, fear was something that I, that I left behind in the process. So like when I when I hear all the stories about Illuminati and all that, you know, I, I know it's real but we God, like we we they can't they can't destroy what we what we are, what we do. So like, you know, I just I just you know, I just I just take notes and um I put it in my music, you know, I try to. You know, I said like if hip hop is dead then it's all y'all fault. Two faced the double agents, all y'all fault. Go and tell, run, go and tell, little snitch. You can ride in hell, you dirty son of a bitch. Low down, good for nothing, rotten to the core, agent provocateur. Mm. I'm not going, so what you knocking for? All right. I'm not even my mind, soul, and body caught. Bet money each and every one of y'all bought, just like I thought. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I know that cats are selling their souls, and it's like, it's, 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 it's an open market. If you want to sell your soul, you know, some, some, I mean, some MCs even tell you in their songs what they do. How they sold out. So like, mm-hmm. I know it's very real. It is. It's a real thing. It, it's it's not just with the music. It's with the whole industry. It's with the actors. It's with the singers. It's with the rappers. Mm-hmm. It's with the athletes. You know. It's it's yes. Yeah, it's, it's 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 deep, yo. It's what dark. About, it's deep. What about you know? LL Cool J? You think he sold out or? I, I'm I'm. I don't deal with that cat. Um, <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. He licks his lips too much for me. Like I I don't, I don't know. I can't really. I don't know about that cat, you know what I mean? Like I said, okay. I don't like to really speak on things that I don't know, but I don't really resonate with, with LL too tough. Like, I don't really know what he's doing. Like, I don't watch TV, so I don't know. I know he's on TV. I think he was on some show. I mean, he's, you know, he's 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 basically sustained a career for himself. Not, you know, he doesn't do albums anymore, not that I know of, but, you know, he's on TV, does movies and stuff like that. So, like, I don't really, I don't, you know, hate on nobody. But I don't really right. resonate with 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 everybody either, so I really can't say. I don't know. I, I heard he was. I heard he was homo. Like I don't know. I, I, I don't know that, what happened. Yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I don't know. You know what I mean? I, that's a lot of. There's a lot of that going on. So I, you know, I just do me. I just keep it moving. I hear you. Yeah. Just keep doing what that, you do. Um, when we're looking at the industry and we're looking at the increase of homosexuality, and now all of a sudden. Um, all these so-called entertainers and rappers and um, ballers, or you know, wearing dresses, you know, um, yeah. you know, how do you, you see that as part of the um, Rockefeller effeminizing eugenics program most, as far as most turning males? Right. Yeah, they emasculating the black man. Yeah, most definitely. They've been doing it since slavery when they was when they was castrating us, man. Like mm. you know, like. Right. Right. Now, now it's just, it's yeah, it's 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 the high tech castration. It's it's, it's really. It's it's just what it is. It's like they they putting dresses on us, and we 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 dancing and singing. We going for it, man. Like I see it. I'm seeing it. It's crazy. Like you know, it's, I, like wow. Like really, you too. Like you got on a dress now. You know, mm. I don't know, man. Yeah, it's 
definitely it's definitely a, a you know a, a strategized you know well calculated plan to destroy us as a, as a race because that's that's what's happening with this whole gay agenda, man. I'm sorry to offend anybody out there, but I don't I just can't rock with it. Right. Can't rock with that. Right. That's not going to build a nation. That's 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 counter counterproductive. No doubt. To any to any nation. You know, and that's not our that's not our culture anyway. That's not our culture. We don't we don't we're not supposed to be getting down like that. But you see it's so rampant right now that it's like, wow, like this is what time it is right now. Like this is really what they're doing. And it's they they made it this they're going mainstream with it. And yeah, you seen yeah. it you seen that you seen the rappers wearing wearing kilts and dresses and somebody tried to tell me to wear a dress, yo. Oh. I'm like, really? Are you serious? Like Wow. Yeah, this lady I you know, this white girl, oh, man. man. I mean, she, I don't know, she, I don't know, maybe she meant well. She thought it would be cool for me to, like, she's like, yeah, you wear, it's called a utility, a utility kilt. It's got pockets on it, and it's cool, it's <laughs> leather. I was like, yo, really? But, you know, I wasn't going, man. Mm. I wasn't going. But a lot of these guys are going, you, man. They're going. They told you, told you you don't roll like that. Nah, man. I don't roll like that. <laughs> 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 no, no, no. Yeah, man, but yeah, I see. I, I'm seeing it all the time. I don't, you know, I don't want to call nobody out, but yeah, I'm seeing the actors, and you know, like Dave Chappelle, man, big up to him, man, because he he spoke on it so eloquently, and and you see it, you see it, and it's unfolding like you're seeing it happen. Like it's it's, it's every other week, somebody got a dress on. It's an actor right. or, or or a musician, you know what I mean? Like, so that's they they doing that to steer us off the cliff, you know what I mean? Like, we're not going to reproduce and, 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 you know, get this black family back strong with men wanting to be women and women wanting to be with other women and, yeah. you know, women looking like men. And it's like, wow, like, yeah. this, like man, they home. home. This, this is what they want. <laughs> yeah, man, I got to have my sister. Man, I got to have, have that woman next to me, that queen. No doubt, brother. Boy, don't give me nothing. I just I'm, I roll dolo then. I just you know what I mean. Like I can't I can't rock no other way. I don't know how to do it. I can't do it. And I can't condone it either. No. I can't condone it either. I I walk off the set. I've done it. <laughs> I've stepped. So have I. I. Yeah. Uh, can't be a part of that. Going on real and um, every day every other day someone else is. Just seen a new case of um of all Kelly with one on, and then right before him it was Jay Z, you know, with the kill, you know, with the same type of thing that you're talking about with the kill. What you what you call it? Yeah, yeah, you tell a kill. I don't know you what they call. I don't know what they wearing. They just they just straight out wearing dresses now. Some of these some of these cats. But oh. yeah, like they they just trying to dress it up and give it a different name. You know, they got the man purse, the merce. You know. They got the the, right. the the dresses. They're giving them different names, but it's a dress. It's a dress. You know, well, like you, Mexican well, you know stockings. Like, anybody who you reads Francis Quest in ISIS papers, she was speaking about this. This was taking place back in the seventies, but somehow we was able to bypass that going into the eighties and the nineties. You know what I'm saying? But now here it is. You know what I'm saying? Thirty years later, um, they're bringing it back stronger than ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean, we to blame too, man. We 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 falling right into it, right? You know, right. And we we dogging our women out. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's crazy, man. The way we like when you listen to some of this some of this music, if you want to call the music that's out there, what we doing what we doing to our black women is is is, is, a, is a travesty. Oh man, is we putting them out there just so bad and such a they just they just you know it's it's wow. I don't know, man. Like, and the women, you know, they, they. I mean, we all got to take accountability because these women out here, they just, they just busting it down and they break, they twerking it and they, they half naked in these videos or these, these YouTubes or these, these whatever these videos they got coming out now. Like, these sisters lost their minds, man. And these brothers are condoning it with the strippers and the, we're making it rain and all. Like that whole, that whole, that whole movement, if you want to call it, that whole mentality. Was was like was you know we glorifying the strippers and like what why, like why would you do that? Why would you do that to your black woman to put her on right. a pole and she's dancing for dollars for money? 
Like that money don't that money don't even have no weight. That money that money don't mean nothing. That money is worthless. It is. But like we just so lost and so we so wrapped up in, 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 in this society that we just we lost, man. You got to dance on the hole yeah. with something that's not there. That yeah, man. You know yeah. Yeah, so hmm. I don't know, man. You know, and we condoning, you know, my girl likes girls and Minaj a trois and, you know, you got rappers calling themselves, you know, like Nicki Minaj and, like, it's 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 just it's so it's just like it's it's embedded within our they they trying to they're making it like it's just it's just cool it's it's normal like this is what we're supposed to do with our black women we want threesomes and foursomes and you know we're not respecting you we just want to just use you and you are you okay with being used and we we calling you all out your name and you just you know we just gonna throw money at you and, and I don't know man it's just, it's crazy like when to you know when I speak on it. I, I, I kind of get like I, I feel like an ill feeling, so like a lot of times I, I really I really can't deal with it because it's so it's so way out there, it's so far we so far gone that I just do the music like that's my that's how I counteract it like I just do my music and try to like hopefully balance some of this out, you know, but it's it's crazy you know I just I look after my my circle and my seeds and try to make sure that they're not going astray because. That's really what it's about, man. Like, we, we, you know, we, we, we responsible for the next generation coming out. And so, if we allow them to be brainwashed and programmed by the media and by the TV and by the the movies and, and, the, and the videos, then then we really we we failed. So, I try to just like lead by example, and I don't rock like that. I, my woman is rocking. You know, she she can't be out there looking. A, any kind of way, like she then she represents me. So like right. I, you know what I mean. Like it's just we got to get back to our culture again. Like the gods right. used to say, you know, you rock three fourths of cloth. Well, you don't necessarily have, have to rock three fourths of cloth, but you're not rocking even one fourth of cloth right now. Like you're just taking it all off, and, and you're not respecting right. yourself. And mm-hmm. then you can't you can't accept to, you can't expect to get respect. So this black man out here is not respecting himself or you. And you, it's like it's just a big vicious cycle, mm. and it's like the baby mamas and the daddy's not there, and you know it's just that that whole that whole you know downward spiral of the black family. So where does it stop? Right. Like, what, 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 right. What were some of the things that you think um, would get you know um, would get us back on track? You know, especially with you know, for example, you know, you would say that you know we underground. You know what would be something in which that would get you know the underground back you know, um, you know the buzz as far as you know getting us back out this the originality the creativity, you know as compared uh-huh. to you know the first that is on the radio right now, you know a lot uh-huh. of it is you know not, not all of it you know there's some songs that I actually do like, you know, yeah. um, you know but but most of it you know is something in which that like you said earlier, you know isn't something in which that you know, is going to be a classic. It's not something I'm going to turn on or want to turn on, you know, 10, 20, 30 years later mm-hmm. and say, yo, mm-hmm. I remember that. I remember that. Right. That was the era right now. There's no music in which that is really doing that right now, you know, as far as um, making us go back and say, yo, that's the era. You know, like 90 mm-hmm. hip-hop, you know, everybody, you know, who, you know, who was growing up during that time period, you know, in some shape, form, or fashion, you know, can go back and say, yo, that's the nineties hip hop era right there. That's yo, that's real hip hop. You know, Word. you know, whatever the case is, you know, but then, you know, we also see even in the you know, in the nineties, you know, how they threw in, you know, the dumb and down effect. And but it was so much consciousness out there at that time period that the dumb stuff didn't even matter. You know what I'm saying? They got very little play. You know, it was the um intelligence stuff for which that was getting more play that time period. You know, what you think would flip, you know, flip that back around? Or if there's, you know, or is there anything in which that would flip that back around? Well, that's a good question. That's a good question, Ali. I feel like, first, I feel like some of the cats that are in positions of power, there's very, there's few of us that are in positions of power that can make decisions to put certain artists on. Those people have to be willing to take a risk in the sense that, like I was saying before, with with comparing the, the food to the, the music to food, like 
a lot of these managers or these A and R's or these cafe in positions to sign other artists, they're afraid to do something that's different from what's considered the norm right now. And maybe it's because they feel like the general public won't be able to 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 relate to whatever you're bringing to the table if it's too conscious or if it has too much of a message. So like this, like cats have to be willing to take that risk to have the, the insight and the foresight to say this is what our people need to hear, and it's good music, and we need and we need this right now. Right. Instead of saying, oh well, you don't sound you know enough like this artist, or you got to talk about this, or you got to have this this image in order to fit into our program. It's all the programming. So like I think that's the first thing. Like certain cats, brothers or sisters, whoever they are, whatever race you are. If you're in a position to to bring some real hip hop to the to you know to the table and and put it out there on a on a on a more you know mainstream level where cats on the underground can get that exposure, then I think that that's the first that's one of the first steps to for cats like myself. But see, I don't I'm not looking for a handout. Like I'm just gonna I'm I'm gonna build my own machine and I'm gonna start this movement you know with the team I got and we just gonna keep growing. But but it would be conducive to the whole culture if certain certain people would, would take that risk and have the insight and the foresight to say, let's put this artist on because they're doing something good. Like, this is original, it's creative, it's dope. And, you know what I mean, and let that let that get out there so that the, the, the younger minds can, can have something to choose from. Like, because you don't know what people want. You know, like, you don't know, like, how they're going to, you know what I mean? Like, you got to put it out there. Like, sometimes you just got to put it out there because, like, I feel like my music can appeal to anybody. And it does appeal to a lot of different people, young, old. But, like, they'd be like, wow, I never heard you. Like, I never heard of you. Like, why why aren't you on? Or why haven't you, why haven't I heard of you before? Why haven't you blown up? Like, I get that all the time. Why haven't you blown up? Why haven't you blown up? I'm like, I'm not really trying to blow up. And, you know, I don't like that. That, that terminology of blowing up because I don't want to blow up. I want to oh, just, okay. you know what I mean? I don't want to just huh. self-destruct. But I know what they mean when they say that, but, like, I just want to continue to grow my audience. And and that's what I'm trying to do, and that's what I'm doing. But um, that's one thing is to take a risk. Um, and I think the other thing is that as artists, we have to we have to be more responsible, too. And, um, and I mean, you know, but on the real, though, how I really feel is I feel like this is going to happen regardless because of the time we're in. I feel like this, I feel like a lot of the shorties that I, that I come in contact with and I've been coming to a lot of, I've been, I've been like building with a lot of, a lot of the shorties now, like the, the, the 17, 18, 20 somethings. And these, these, these young, you know, minds are, they want something new. Like they're telling me like they want something. They, they tired of, a lot of them are tired of what's out there. So like, but they don't have a choice. So they're just being programmed. They're being, mm. you know, they're being force-fed the same stuff over and over. So that's all they have to, you know, like, again, it's our, it's, it's our responsibility to bring something new to the table. So I know that it's a, it's, it's, it's a, it's, this is the right time right now because of where we are and, 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 and you know, the, what time it is right now, it's time for a new era. And this is, like, it's, the time is right to change the guard, like this is this is what this is the rise of the sun guards right now, like the rise of the queen, the black queen, and all that. Like this is what time it is. So I think it's going to happen anyway. And like this right. conversation right here is, is, is proof of that. Like it's going to happen. It's happening. You know what I mean? Like it's it's, it's actually happening now. But sometimes you don't see it. Like it's dark, and then when that sun cracks over the horizon, it's just like a burst of light. You know? But it's dark before the. They say it's dark is before the dawn. So I see the light before it even breaks through, because I live right. in the future like that. So I think it's gonna it's, it's gonna happen. I know it's gonna happen. There's nothing you could really right. do to stop it. Exactly. It's just a matter of when. No. Right. Yeah. I definitely agree. I really, I really feel that. Right. I really feel that. Right. Like that's yeah, what I said, you know, like a an um, trying to stop an avalanche. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, get, it's that time. It's that time. We got area code three one four. Area code three one four. You on the line? What's going on? What's going on, brothers? Just uh, Desmo, Mau, Mau Bay, Ali. I hit you up on uh, Facebook, man. It's a comic artist. All right. 
What's going on, fellas? Um, yeah, man, I just want to um make a little comment, you know. On, uh, well, first and foremost, you know what I'm saying? Love your show. You know what I'm saying? Listen to it. I'm still playing catch up on YouTube with all the other other shows you done done. But um, but y'all hit a lot of good points, man. You know, um, really, really, um, Ali, I remember you talking about those. Uh, I, I, I think it's like nine or seven fronts that we're that we're fighting. Um, right. You know, uh, media, media being one. And uh, you know, brother, I brought oh, not to, you know what I'm saying. I almost forgot to mention your, your lyrics is dope, bro. You know what I'm saying. I was rocking with. I was you know what I'm saying resonating with it. But um, you know, uh, you you might know you might uh, heard of this. You know, little, little uh, like for example, one of the uh, young artists, uh, Chief Keef out here. Um, yeah. like last year, like last year, brother, the, the the young dude got locked up, and then he got he got out. But then as soon as he got out, his record label dropped him like. A couple, like a couple more mil, just to make the same music he been doing. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, so I'm like, I, I'm like, okay. So they paying, you know what I'm saying? So they steady paying this dude to it's act awesome, as, man, yeah. yeah, yeah, steady paying this dude to act as brainwash our youth. You know what I'm saying? So they can keep because right. the niggas who the niggas who own the jail industry, you know what I'm saying? The same niggas who own the the, uh, the music industry. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's like. It's it's like, a, it's like a never ending cycle, you know what I'm saying, G? And it's, and it's like niggas out here really think that, you know, well, I'm gonna become a rapper. It's like is that is that the most you can think of yourself, my nigga? Like right. the best you can do, the best you can do is just be a, a rapper. And if, and and if anything, you're gonna be ass because you're gonna talk about the same shit everybody else talk about. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're gonna talk about violence, drugs, and 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 the and the, the idiotic thing about drugs and and money and shit is. My nigga, all this paint and these different pictures and these colors and shit, you really think that's just for aesthetic purposes on this money. They can track this shit wherever they want to because they made it for you, as well right. as the motherfucking drugs. How many cocaine exactly. fields, how many domestic cocaine fields do you know are in the United States? But yet cocaine is heavy, is heavy in all of the melanated communities and all of the, and I, you know what I'm saying, Hispanics, mm-hmm. Motherfucking, I, I'm up here in, in Stella Heights, and you know these these Chaldeans, you know what I'm saying? They look white to me, but you know they still got a little melanin. But it's it's hella hella drugs up here. Mm-hmm. But um, but I'm like I'm like you know I, I just like I just I uh be rapping with with some of you. Like, what makes you think that you're not gonna get caught when you using their product and you using their money and you really think that you're gonna outsmart them? Like, come on, my nigga, like you gotta. One, you gotta have some confidence in yourself. You gotta love yourself, G. Like you gotta stop looking at yourself as you know uneducated. You know what I'm saying? You gotta stop looking at yourself as uncivilized. You know, exactly. you know it's especially the women. The women, before anything, because you know what I'm saying, you gonna listen to your mama for your daddy. The women, you know what I'm saying? The 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 women is is the ones who who really need to you know demand that respect because shit, if a woman tells a nigga to come here, shit, best believe that man is gonna go. He's gonna jump jump through. Uh, 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 hoops, you know what I'm saying, to, to get to that woman, to get to that, to that, well, I'm a mama, that, you know what I'm saying, that womb, you know what I'm saying, so, but, um, but, um, um I, I did have a question, Duffy had a question, um, concerning, oh, no, no, not, not a question, but, uh, uh, when y'all was talking about the, uh, the acting groove, man, that shit be killing me, cause, like, you know what I'm saying? I was uh this is a, a while back, you know. Um I had watched uh this was when that movie was what's, what's uh, Will Smith play this movie After Earth? Yeah, After Earth. What is fun? So I'm like yeah. yeah. So I'm like, okay, Will Smith doing his thing, but I didn't know about the Seven Pounds movie. <laughs> I ain't know about this this nigga had, you know what I'm saying, this whole homosexual he had you know what I'm saying, straight straight a whole relationship. And then I peeped that like so, you said what? Question. Um, what's dude's name? Wesley Wesley Snipes. Uh, what's that movie he did when he was a woman? One two oh, three. I, I can't think of it. Uh, yeah. But y'all know what I'm talking two. about, those. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. There it is. There it is. Right there. And uh, what's let the, me see. Uh, what? the movie? Two 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 one four something like that. Well, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um. Enough, uh, yeah, it's the same the thing with uh, with uh, with Don Cheadle. Don Cheadle did some gay shit. It's like all these niggas. It's like it's like you <laughs> gotta do. It's like you gotta do some gay shit in order to have 
like, you know, any respectable part or or in like or like what, what brother says to blow up, but shit, when you blow up, like you really you're literally blowing away, you know what I'm saying? It's like you blowing up your your soul basically. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you selling your shit away. Mm-hmm. But um but yeah that's that's all I wanted to uh you know what I'm saying touch on that. I did have another question, you know, kinda not not really changing the subject, but um I uh, went to the one of the uh, temples up here in uh in Michigan and um, brothers, uh, especially uh, I, I believe it's brother L, correct, right? Right, brother L. Right, right, brother L. Yeah. So I, I remember hearing on uh, one of the older recordings, you know, about how the uh, temples is not teaching what they're supposed to be teaching. And I went to this temple, and they talking about you know praise. They were talking about praising. Mm-hmm. Noble Drew Ali, and I'm like, yeah. you know, no disrespect, all all love and respect to you know, the Honorable Drew Ali. He made moves for us, but like, what you mean? It's because the Prophet Noble Drew Ali says so. I thought I was finna. I thought when I came there, bro, I thought I was gonna learn about some commerce. I thought I was gonna learn about trade. I thought I was gonna learn about some mm-hmm. business, some mm-hmm. as some Aboriginal shit. No, and, um, yeah, <laughs> no. but that just you yeah, said we what? Had, we, we had a topic on that one time. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, they 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 they've been compromised more. The temples and here in St. Louis, of uh, of uh, Detroit, uh, the more uh, science temples of America Incorporated. They have you say here in St. You you in St. Louis, brother L? Yes, sir. Well, uh, you um, okay, okay. What what's your uh your email or something? But I, I'm I'm I was born and raised in St. Louis. Went down to school in um in okay. Nashville. And I'm up here in Michigan, but yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh I'm I definitely phone, wanna you know what I'm saying, meet you face to face. My phone number is area code three one four six four four. Uh-huh. Four four two five. Four four two five? Yes, sir. That's my number, phone number. All right. All right, now uh finish you saying my uh, my fault. Feel free to call me anytime. If I'm not there, I will will give you a return call. Just leave a message. For sure, for sure. Well, finish what you were saying, though. I ain't, I ain't mean to interrupt you. Fahim, Fahim, Rick Ring L. Fahim? Fahim, yes, sir. All right, all right. Okay. All right, fellas. Um, all right, fellas. Uh, I mean, well, you know, that's, that's really all I have to say, man. Brother, uh, Abdullah Googled you, and, like, I just kept getting these, these Earl motherfuckers coming up, so... Where mm-hmm. where can I uh where can I where can I listen to listen to some more of your music? Well, if you look at uh if you if you if you go to YouTube and you just put in my name Akbar and you type in Mental Giants, then a lot of my videos will pop up. But um my Twitter is is my name Akbar the MC. It's A K M C. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's it, I'm gonna spell it out. It's A as in the law. K as in knowledge, B as in born, A, R, T, H, E, the letter M as in master, the letter C. Aqua, the MC. That's my Twitter. And then my SoundCloud is really, it's kind of popping. It's got a lot of, a lot of my music on my SoundCloud. My SoundCloud, if you go to, if you, if you, if you fuck with SoundCloud, it's the SoundCloud.com slash Akbars with a Z on the end, A-K-B-A-R-Z. And you get, you, that's really like one place you can go to and listen to everything, and most of it is downloadable. You can go and download a lot of my music if you go to soundcloud.com slash Akbars with a Z on it. Okay, um, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm definitely going to check this out. Yeah, yeah. All right, so, I, I, then, fellas, man, you know, I ain't, ain't going to take up too much of your time and shit, man. I appreciate the love. Appreciate all the knowledge and shit, brother Ali, man. Keep yeah. doing, man, bro, keep doing your thing. Matter of fact, since, since I got you, uh, you know um, the the cute I was talking about, my old head. His name is Son of the Sun. Right. All right. All right. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I believe so, God. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, I think he he either met you in um, in New York or in, uh, North Carolina. It was at the at the some convention y'all did or something. You know, you you uh, asked him to do your papers and all that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's my uh, that's my old head. You know, he he that's that's my mentor. You know, helping me uh, helping me with my process and everything. But um, but yeah, though, man, I'm I'm hot that I can't make it to that uh to that North Carolina groove though, to that uh retreat. 
But do, yeah. but do, but y'all do y'all thing though, man. Y'all keep keep that shit up, dog. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, tune in Wednesday at o'clock. All right, appreciate it, man. Right. Appreciate you, dog. Thank you, sir. Peace. Respect. Okay. Respect. Yeah, just any closing comments, brother Akbar, before we go. Wow, it's it's been phenomenal, my brother. I look forward yes, to man. building with you too, uh, like for real. Um, I enjoy all your lectures, man. Like you don't even understand. Like I I I, I think you do, but I just can't overstate how much love I got for what you do and which, which the work you're putting out there because you definitely, like, put me on to a lot of things and you opened my mind to a lot of things, brother, and um, I appreciate you for that. And I love being a part of this, man. Like, I've been trying to tap into this conscious community for some time, and by the grace of the law, like, I did that, you know what I mean, through my own works and my own efforts. And um, I, I just I just, I give thanks for that, man, and um, look forward to building with you. And I just want to big up to all my family, man, like everybody who supports me, um, like I said, to my son, Tariq, my daughter, Hannah, my, my, my other daughter, Layla, my, my grands. Um, I, I, you know, I got to big up TME Productions. Up, we up in the Bronx. We're doing it, like, real big. We got the studio full, full-fledged. We got three three different rooms, Studio A, Studio B, and um, we chopping up videos. Big up to my man, Freddie, Fred Once. Big up to Peasant Podium, Rhino, you know, Danny Kodak, my man, Savvy, my man, Lim Berserk. Um, my man Yazid, like I got so many brothers I could shout out. I mean, Shot Town, I got the Gan family, my brother Dr. Mindbender, Shots, Easy Flu, Keenan Coke. Um, Chicago is like really uh, has a has a strong history. Like it's a lot of history in Chicago culturally. This why people, you know, Dusabo was like the first settler. It's, it's, it has a, a rich history, and I had to appreciate Chicago when I moved out there. So I big up Chicago all the time, man. But you know, big up to New York City, which is my home base, and it's good to be back in New York, man. I, just, I got a lot of plans to do a lot of good work, man, and it's a blessing to reach out to you and connect with you and um, look forward to working with you with some music. You know you know what we talked about. We we got some fire coming for y'all. All um, right. So it's definitely this is just the beginning right here. No doubt. And um, if you can, no check doubt. for me online. Check for me online. The name of the album is called Planet X. And, again, my name is Akbar, A.K. Bazaar, they call me, um, but it's Akbar, the MC on Twitter. But just follow me anywhere on, online. Just Google me and um, get that album, Planet X. It's, it's definitely got some gems on there. So I'm on iTunes and all that. And uh, Peasant Podium is the label, Peasant Podium. That's the label. So just fuck with us, man. We're doing, we doing great work, man. We're just keeping it moving. And no doubt the brother's going to be on my album. That's what he's talking about on um, The Last yes, Dragon, sir. you know, the Naga, the Naga Chronicles. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And um, also we had um, – um, this weekend coming up Sunday from 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. I'm up in Brooklyn, New York at the um, Restoration Plaza, 1368, 14th Street, Brooklyn, New York, 11216. That's 1368, 14th Street. You're going to be right. there in Brooklyn. It's called the Return of the Moors. It's me um, and um, Brother um, Abdullah um, Mosey Bay. All right? That's March 30th. All right, the tickets are twenty dollars for advanced tickets, and I'm thirty at the door. All right, so you're gonna get five hours of blazing information. You know what I'm saying? So we're making our way. You know what I'm saying? Um, back to Brooklyn. Um, I was born and raised there. You know what I'm saying? So, right. um, you know, let's get on there to it, and we're gonna be there once again, March thirtieth. Um, this Sunday coming up. All right. I'm, right I'm, I'm, I'm definitely gonna check that out. Definitely going to check that out. And let me just shout out the Digital Confusion family. That's my family also. Big up to my man, Kurt. Big up to DJ IQ. Um, you already know what time it is, man. Love y'all. Love y'all. Much love, man. I'm going to sign off because I, you know. Much love, it's like this, this, is, this has been an honor and a privilege, man, so I don't want to ruin it. Love. Honor for me, more. Love. Hey, please. And um, please. also one thing, so. Um, we got to um, say, yo, April the 19th, my birthday, born day, Earth Day, solar return. Yo, we're going to be mm-hmm. having something right in our land. So, you know, for those that can make it down to um, to North Kakalak, you know what I'm saying, you know, check us out. That's April the All 19th. Right. All right. I'm going to try to get out there, too, right. man. Big up the scheme, TMT crew. Big up to Lose One. You know what I mean? Hold me down. New York City, baby. We here. Yeah, here. we out, y'all. Yeah. First of all, on the radio, final lead. Final lead. We are on the air. No doubt. All right, all right. 
There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. We get on into some of that Buddha consciousness tonight. First World Order Radio every Wednesday, 8 p.m. We got to talk about what is taking place on the planet. There's always going to be somebody in the building on First World Order Radio. First, we need to let you know we're going to be doing more shows, giving out more information on Wednesdays. Wednesday is 8 o'clock. We are now going to make this is the hottest day of the week. Proceeding in others in time, order, and importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. Proceeding others in time, order, importance, the most prominent parts, voices, or instruments. Earthly state of human concerns in existence, an indefinite multitude, quantity, or distance. System regulates to bring about specifics in the group based on value and natural characteristics. Current radiates electromagnetistics of sound through the air, same as your thoughts transmits it. You need to understand how magical this, uh, something like this every Wednesday can become. So you need to start uh, getting your calendar right, getting your schedule, your schedule right. You need to know how intention is straight out. All right, so, I mean, these clues are given throughout the various languages was to piece the puzzle of this ancient history school back together again. And what we plan on doing, both of us, is bringing y'all some surefire dynamite. We're going to take this level up a notch. We're going to have stuff to do here. This is not just going to be about philosophies and theories, shit that works. <laughs> 